Father, the gods plant reason in mankind, of all good gifts the highest. And to say you speak not rightly in this, I lack the power, nor do I crave it. Still, another's thought might be of service. And it is for me, being your son, to mark the words, the deeds, and the complaints of all. To a private man, your frown is dreadful, who has things to say that will offend you. But I, secretly, can gather this. How the folk mourn for this maid, who of all women most unmeriting for noblest acts, dies by the worst of deaths. Who her own brother, battle slain, unburied, would not suffer to perish in the bangs of carrion hounds or any birds of prey, and, as the whisper darkling passes, is she not worthy to be carved in gold? Father, besides your welfare, there is nothing more prized by me. For what more glorious crown can there be to children than their father's honour, or to a father from his sons than theirs? Do not persist then to retain at heart one sole idea that the thing is right which your mouth utters and not else besides. For all men who believe themselves alone wise, whether they possess a soul or a speech such as none other, turn them inside out, they are found empty. And though a man be wise, it is no shame to live and learn and not stretch a course too far. You see how all the trees on winter's torrent banks yielding preserve their springs. Those that would stem it break, roots and all. Likewise, the shipman who keeps his vessel's main sheet taut and will not slacken, goes cruising in the end, keel uppermost. Let thy wrath go. Be willing to relent. For if some sense, even from a younger head, be mine to afford, I say it far better a man should be furnished for every accident with inbred skill, but what of that? Since nature's bent would have it otherwise, it is good to listen to those who counsel wisely. <laughs>